All right, guys, we're back in the shop this morning. Um, Chris is already getting started working on the car. We're taking all the stuff off underneath it. All the plastics and stuff's got to come out, um, as well as the mid pipe right here. So we're gonna do that. We did on Dylan's car, so we know what to do. But after the fact, we're gonna head. We're gonna go ahead and tackle the headers back here. Um, hopefully, I can show you guys some footage of the cracked header. I'm pretty sure I have a cracked header. Here's the setup I was talking about. I have deleted cats. Um, it goes to a dump tube, so I have no mufflers back here. I'm gonna go ahead and get started taking some of the stuff off and I'm gonna record after the fact so you can see the process. I'm probably not gonna do time lapse, it's, it's gonna kill the battery. So um, we'll be right back in a little bit. All right, quick update. We removed the mid pipe off the car. We removed the oil dipstick and all the little plastics underneath there. So now we gotta go ahead and try to take the header off. I locked the steering wheel down with the seat belt through the steering wheel and then I pushed the seat back a little bit to give it a little bit of tension. Also went ahead and marked with paint the shaft so that I, I won't lose the direction that it's supposed to be sitting in. I don't want to mess this up so make sure you go ahead and mark that down with some paint and I'm pretty sure we're going to drop the subframe which are like the four points right here. That way it'll make it easier for the headers to come out. Probably going to support it on the bell housing instead of the crank. Siki recommends doing it on the crank, but PPE recommends it on the bell housing. Um, I guess because you wanna support it on the crank, it alleviates all of the weight from the front of the engine since you're gonna be removing the motor mounts and everything like that. So uh, we, we'll see what we wanna do, but right now we're gonna work on taking the header apart and we'll be right back after I get the header out. So it's been three hours and we finally got the OEM headers out. So let me show you guys what they look like. It actually looks pretty bad. I actually really did have a cracked header. So as you can see here, this is what happens when your headers are cracked. It's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to have like this little washer right here, or flat washer to hold this together. Even so, it's, it's bound to happen. Like look at here, see? It just gets really crappy over time. The design is really awful. I mean, you have one tube going to the main tube and then you have three of them sharing the same like to go to the main tube whereas this one is all individual as you can see so honestly this every car should have this upgrade if you have an isf just replace them spend the money to replace them you're gonna have way more horsepower you enjoy the car a lot more um like i said i wasn't going to buy headers anytime soon but mines are clearly destroyed so uh, this is what happens when you know with age over time they break um, it's just a common issue, the ISF. When you're making a million horsepower, you know, this is gonna happen. So you need to buy something like this, which is designed a little bit better to last. So just a walk through, we took the subframe out. Um, it's right here on the floor, subframe's out. Just disconnected from the two uh, lower control arms on both sides and we dropped it. We supported this on the bell housing. And yes, I don't have a piece of wood here, but it's fine because this shape is perfectly round to match that. It's been fine so far. Uh, this gets disconnected and it's hanging on the sway bar. You can see the wheel is all cambered out. This inside. Looking really, really nice and clean still, at least. Uh, from where it broke, it broke on this cylinder. You can see it's slightly dirtier around here than the rest. So. When you're at this position, you want to go ahead and overlook everything. Make sure there's no leaks. Um, mine seems to be fine, to be honest with you. So I'm just going to clean that up, put the brand new gaskets in, and everything should be good. When working on your header, you want to take your time, be careful, have all the types of swivels that you need. There's swivels like this that you can buy. Um, this is going to be way too fat, and it's going to get in the way of a lot of the, the corners and bolts that you can't get to. So get one that's a 3.8 swivel that you can add a long extension on like this uh, because using a short extension like this, it won't clear the bolt off the head of the car. So you're going to be stripping the bolt. So you just got to be very careful. We got lucky. We caught it ahead of time. Uh, I was able to get like half of the bolts out with the air tool, but the rest I did by hand with the 3.8 ratchet. So just, you know, use any tool that you can. I recommend using a lift. Don't do it in the garage. It's not safe. It really isn't safe. I'm even kind of nervous having that um, engine stand right there. So we're going to try to get this going. Uh, we got to take one more O2 sensor off to swap it over. And then once that's swapped, we're going to run the, uh, the extension for the O2 sensors and then bolt everything back up and hopefully everything goes well. So we'll be right back with update once the headers are in the car. 
so it'll probably be another two hours. All right, guys, so we are looking at how many hours? So we're at five hours, five and a half hours in. We're almost done. Subframe is back in, as you can see. Headers are in. Uh, only thing we have to do now is buy a new O2 sensor. It's really finicky when it comes to taking these off on older cars or actually any car. They strip. So I was able to save, or Chris was able to save the passenger side, which is right here. But then the driver side is still, it's still stuck inside of the old manifold. And we tried torching it and PV blasting it, but it just gave out. All right, so that took a shit. So it stripped a little bit and we're just gonna buy another one. It's okay, you know, like I don't, I don't really care. I just wanna get the car done. We actually finished this, honestly, in five hours. We just kind of took a break, kind of looked over things because of this whole entire situation, but with two people, you should be doing, you should be able to finish this in six hours or so. My buddy Joe ISF, he said he took 11 hours to do with his friend. If you have a lift, it's the easiest way to do this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to O'Reilly's, try to get an O2 sensor. Um, I'm gonna call my friend at Toyota, see if we can cross-reference the sensor and buy it. If the price difference is only like a few bucks, like 60 bucks, 70 bucks, you know, with the, with the employee discount i'm just gonna go buy the toyota one but um i'll keep you guys updated what we plan to do but we're very close this car is gonna be loud as fuck and i'm gonna let my buddy chris drive it because he's been he's been knocking this shit out with me all morning and couldn't have a better technician with me so we're gonna get we're gonna go look for the l2 sensor and get some of the drink and uh, i'll be right back